So my name is Adam Wimpenny and I'm a, a director. I got into TV um, doing more factual entertainment and documentary work, but I realised that if I was to ever get into the, into the world of filmmaking and do a feature film, I needed something to prove more than just my student films, that I could actually make a standalone short film that felt cinematic and would show that I could tell a, a tight story in 15 minutes, work with actors, make something look visual, and really use it as a calling card. A couple of years ago, I made a short film called Raw. It was about uh, a young man who worked in a key cutting place in central London. You, you know that there's some, there's, there's some backstory, but you're not quite sure it, where it's going, and really the, the, the story turns into a thriller. So the project for me really was all, all going to start with finding the right location. And once we established that there was this great key cutting place in, in the middle of London that we could use, the next challenge was to find the money. So we estimated we needed about £15,000 to do it because we wanted to get um, you know, some notable actors, we wanted to work with proper crew. And really we knew that money wasn't going to go on anybody's salaries, it was really purely logistical. It was going to go on location fees, it was going to go on a hiring kit, getting camera kits around central London, permits, all, all, all those things which over time add up enough money for a composer. And really, if you're going to attract quality uh, heads of department on board a project to that sort of scale, you want to make sure they've got the right toys to work with. Our cast ended up being Russell Toby, who um, I'd seen a TV series called Little Dorrit and thought he was fantastic. And, Russell's gone off to do all sorts of, you know, bigger films and shows since then. Uh, there was Jodie Whittaker, who has been in Broadchurch and also in feature films, and uh, Tom Burke, who's also a fantastic actor and has been doing a lot of BBC series recently. So between the three of them, um, I felt we had a really interesting cast, um, and we just threw ourselves into it. Because of the time constraints, there was no rehearsal time. I always like to do a table read to try and get people in a room beforehand, but... In this instance, it was just a case of, right, turn up on set and just go for it. So we were having to work very quickly. So you have to really be as streamlined and as clear as possible about what you want to achieve in that time as possible. Because when you get big names generously offering their time for free to come and work with you, I think it's your duty as a director to be prepared and really know what you want to do in advance. So my process into that is I really like to break down the script go through the script, try and outline where I think the performance notes might be for the actors. So I've really thought through what it is I'd like to get out of them, even if I can't talk to them face to face. And then storyboarding is a big thing. I think I think it's, depending on what sort of genre you're working in, there's an argument for and against it. But I think if you're doing something like a thriller, where it's very much about choosing your frames and the shot sizes and every, you know, every camera angle tells the story, I like to know in advance what it is I'm setting out to do. The, the, I think one of the biggest challenges of making a short film are the logistics, because if you are doing a, a, a proper feature film or you're doing a TV drama, you tend to have makeup wagons, you'd have, um, you know, you would build a whole production village away from the location. And what you'll usually find is that the location has to become the, uh, the makeup room, the green room, the catering room. So that's a real challenge because if you're using a house and um, you're wanting to move around it like we were, where we were shooting in bedrooms and hallways and kitchens, you would literally have to move the departments around the building. So you're falling over each other. It's very difficult, can be very noisy. So, so what I would always recommend is working with a really good AD who can strategize and you really have a plan of attack because all those little precious seconds throughout the day amount to hours and before you know it you start dropping shots at the end of the day because you're not making time and we had to do that we had to compromise there were lots of things in the film that we never got to shoot but that's just part of the course it happens on feature films happens in tv dramas you always have to compromise somewhere so i would say always start shooting your most important stuff that you really want to get at the beginning of the day and if you're smart you'll schedule the the lesser stuff towards the end do not put your big scenes at the end of the day Put them towards the, the beginning where you can spend time working up with the scenes with the actors, get the performances right, and then, um, and then you know, make the cull later in the day when it's the lesser stuff.
With Raw, we recognised that it was going to quite play quite well in America, being a thriller. It was very London-centric. Um, and it, it, there, was, there was a bit of a twist in the story. So um, we sent it out to quite a lot of film festivals, like the Palm Spring Festival, the Rhode Island Festival, uh, the Aspen Festival, which is great. Uh, and they all played very well at these festivals, and we, we did pick up quite a lot of awards. That got me representation with William Morris Endeavour, which is a big uh, talent agency in America. And I think without having made the film and having played in America, I wouldn't have um, had that representation. If you are a filmmaker and you're wanting to uh, make a feature film, I think you have to be thinking in terms of the long game. Um, obviously, it's, it's very competitive, it's a lot of money, there's a huge amount of risk involved in saying to somebody, right, here's your money, go make a film. So um, the short film serves as a calling card to prove that you can do that, and I think uh, the short films that I made, being Raw and another one I made called First Time, they were hugely helpful in helping us get the finance because we could confidently walk into a, uh, a film financier company, uh, a film company, present them the script and then show them the short films and say, OK, this is a feature film we'd like to make. These are the shorts. This is how much we made it for. Um, you know, have some faith in us that we can make the feature. And it really worked. It was really helpful because it got us uh, recognition within the film industry because we were winning awards for doing the film. It was getting us representation with agents. Um, I think just by the very fact we were working with good HODs and good acting talent in those short films showed confidence for other actors who were prepared to do our feature film. So you have to think in the terms of a couple, a couple of years. It, takes a, it does take time to get a film together, you're developing the script for a long time, you're raising the finance for a long time. So by making those short films, it helps minimise the risk. Everyone in the film industry is risk averse. They're prepared to take gambles, but they want to know that you know how to make a film. And they want to see you're passionate as well. Why should they give you money if you haven't got a film under your belt? Because it's so easy these days to just go out and shoot something. They really want to see that you're, you know, you really believe in this project and you want to do it.